Hello and welcome back to another video. Um, Indie World Showcase. Just gonna react to it. Oh, I think I've seen this before, haven't I? You're cute. It's like a farming Pokemon crossover. Pokey Farmer. Ooblets, yeah. I remember that rings a bell, I think. I'm pretty sure we've seen this before. Don't you just love games that are cozy and weird? Oh, I absolutely do. This charming creature collection and farm simulation game from Gloverland has everything to give you the warm fuzzies. Grow and train adorable little creatures called Ooblets as you cultivate new life in the blossoming community of Batch Town. Customize your character. Befriend the locals. Decorate your house. Run your own shop. And most importantly, have epic dance battles. You can even dress up your Ublet pals and travel to different locations. Visit the Arcade Pack Boardwalk in Port Forward. Saunter through the spooky swamps of nowhere. And ascend the frozen peaks of Tippy Top. Mm. Sounds just like she said titty top and not tippy top. Colorful and mesmerizing planets awaits in this fast paced action RPG across the cosmos. In this deeply story driven game by Stormind Games, you'll use both strength and wits to interact with others and conquer the challenges ahead. Balancing the duality of your physical, and mental powers is key. Sacrifice one for the other against opponents and things might not turn out well for you. Ultimately, your conscience will carry the weight of your decisions. What kind of hero will you become? Choose your destiny in Ventura, Lost Haven, launching on Nintendo Switch Okay. Uh, so it's announced Alec Head is coming to Nintendo Switch. I made uh, the prototype of this game when I was still in for the uh, contest where the theme was flow and I drew inspiration from some other of my favourite games. After graduating I wanted to turn it into a full game. The basic rules and the mechanics are simple but intuitive. Giving you that satisfying aha moment over and over. I hope you'll have a good time playing on Nintendo Switch. Okay. So a giant battery and uh, when you touch metal you power the metal and that does things like light up like death rays that to kill you. Okay. That seems fairly creative. Hey, if you're looking for a clever and challenging 2D puzzle platformer, then we've got just the game for you from Nama Takahashi, a one-person development team. Here, you're a small robot named Alexa, who's on a mission to restore light to the world while navigating a booby-trapped facility. By using your electrifying powers to touch walls, floors, platforms, and switches, electricity will charge through them and bring them to life. Hey, don't get ahead of yourself. Well, I mean, actually, you should. Detach and throw your head to trigger okay. You'll need to retrieve it within 10 seconds, or else. There are mm. hidden rooms and secrets to discover, so use your head, literally, to explore... I don't like 
time and it's like that where you're just gonna insta die because it makes me anxious. It's like, ah, and then I'm, I'm gonna get anxious and I'm gonna make mistakes and I'm gonna hate myself and then I'm gonna cry. This music's bopping. I've not even been paying attention to the gameplay most of this, I've just been listening to the music. So it's like, um. Oh, what was it called? Crypto the Necro Dancer? Necromancer? Crypto the Necromancer? Um, but it's a looter shooter. They should have called it Crypto the Necro Dancer, that would have been a good pun. Oh, imagine if like the final boss in like, uh, Crypto the Necromancer, uh, was they did thriller that would be fucking amazing too bad they wouldn't have been able to do that because fucking um copyright and all that but it's just like oh. i would love a final boss with a thriller music and you have to like time it's just like thriller in the night i'm getting distracted Another card game, game. I think making a trail of these kind of games is very difficult because it's a bit difficult to really gauge a card game just by this because it's like you don't really know exactly what's going on like they are trying to explain to like count to like they say something about like counter system and something like that is like I think the best way to like really promote a card game is by just like getting people to let's play it because uh, when I saw like Mark, I think it was Markiplier play um, Inscription. I fucking loved the look of it. I was like, yes, I want to play that. And then I hated the robot se section because he's fucking cheated. Like, I love ins Inscription, but the worst thing about it was the cat, the AI literally cheated. Like, they could achieve, they could do stuff that you on that you could not do, and it just made it. Frustrating and a pain in the ass at points. Also, I lost a bunch of money because I died without collecting my money, so I lost a bunch of money. Totally accurate battle simulator on Switch, nice. Physics are uh, very uh, 
quality. Oh, and they're awesome. And those aren't your garden variety battles either. Watch your wobbles flail and fail in silly simulated battles. Or make new ones in the unit creator and customize their size, weight, and speed, among other stats. Can't get enough of the wobble? Send them to fight your friends in online multiplayer mode. Oh. Say it with me. It's wobble in time. I know this. Yeah, Tetsu no Fruit by Full Simulator Adult Online Multiplayer. Well, so was a thing. It used to be a guy and a girl. And not two girls. Golden Barella. You're a gruff woodsman on a quest for revenge in this noir punk action adventure from Doinsaw. Armed with the titular Gumbarella, you'll maneuver through various locations, from a cultish town to a junkyard fortress. Use the Gumbarella to glide, swing, dash, dive, and take out enemies side-scrolling combat. Along the way, you'll scavenge for scraps and spare parts to upgrade the umbrella, and employ your sleuthing skills to assist the cast of increasingly bizarre characters in a world rapidly losing its natural resources. And that's just the beginning of your investigation. Plenty of dark twists and turns lie ahead. Umbrella. Launches on mm. Nintendo Switch next year. Hey everyone, I'm the lead programmer on We Are OK, and I'm Luca LeFay, lead singer of the band OLK. We're super excited to announce that our music biopic game is coming to Nintendo Switch. Yes! Ooh, I can play it on a tour bus. Ugh, I can't wait to tour together. We haven't seen each other since that music video brainstorm at your place in LA in 2019? Yeah, wow, wow. And with the game on handheld, it'll be easy to play the new episodes that are coming out every single week, back to back to back. Can't wait to share all okay story and music with y'all. Hey, Jared, can I get your opinion on tour outfits? Narrative from indie pop band OFK is going to take you on quite the emotional ride. Set in downtown Los Angeles, Itsumi Saito struggles to establish herself in LA's ruthless music scene while managing a full time job, a social life, and a brutal commute. But a chance encounter with a rising Hollywood music producer may give her the edge she needs to achieve her dreams. Through episodes released weekly and interactive music videos with a fully voiced cast, you'll witness the lives of Itsumi and her friends unfold. to take a break and not be okay for a second. Thank you. From fighting over song lyrics at Backpack. It's looking like, um... You remember the Telltale games where you, you know, it's just basically an interactive movie. Yeah. Um... 
And I never really liked those kind of games because, again, it just felt like you were just along for the ride. And I'd rather either I'd either I'd rather either watch a movie or play a video game, not play an interactive movie. Like the only really time I've seen something like that done really well is like the Mark in spaces like Mark Player, and that was fun. Well, that's mostly because it had like lots of jokes and it was funny and entertaining. And didn't rely and didn't really on the fact that oh, it's an interactive video. It's just like it's a you know it had its own law story and it was interesting and themes. It was it focused on basically it focused on being a story first and an interactive video second. But where the te Telltale games, they focused on being an in interactive, uh, get you know, movie first, and then a, a video game second. That looks very Morning commutes can be a real jam. Maybe get that dress. Oh, I know, right? But guess what? In many motorways from developer Dinosaur Polo Club, the key to solving the city's congestion problems is you. Draw and build roads to create a bustling metropolis and keep traffic flowing on maps inspired by real life cities. As demands interchange, you'll continuously redesign and expand via upgrades like highways and roundabouts. Mm -hmm. Wrap up the difficulty by taking part in daily and weekly challenges. More maps will unlock as you become a master road designer. How long can you keep the cities of the world moving? Buckle up for mini motorways, cruising on Nintendo. Well, that logo is uh, like based off the Google Maps logo. That looks like it's gonna either, you know, fly or fail based on how the, you know, how likable the characters are and how much you wanna delve into their stories. It looks like a more colourful version of, um, don't starve with anthropomorphic animals. Like, it is like a very similar art style. Oh, it definitely looks like something uh, Call Me Kevin's going to be playing there. Fits this whole theme of cults. Oh, 
Oh, brand new souls like. Very nice. Souls. Another crap's treasure. Eh, I I really need to like at least try Dark, Dark Souls one. But I don't tend to deal well with stress. I don't know if uh, Dark Souls would stress me out too much. Soul likes are known for their difficulty, and we want to create a game that maintains that challenge while being approachable for new fans of the genre. Ooh, what if you died in one hit when you're not wearing a shell? I just said it's supposed to be approachable. Oh, oh what if every time you dodge roll, there's like a 1% chance that you just trip and fall over? Well, it looks like our segment's over, everyone. It's time for crap. Alright, here we go. Put your pincers up. Oh, here we go with the crap puns. Crap. Absolutely. In this action-adventure from Agrocraft, you'll embark on an epic treasure hunt under the sea to buy back your repossessed shell. While wading through this underwater world plagued by pollution and sinister secrets, you'll scavenge for trash and use it as a shell to defend yourself in challenging combat. There are over 50 potential shells, so get shellfish with them and repel enemies with powerful Umami magic. If you don't, You'll be in a pinch before you know it. After all, one crab's trash is another crab's treasure, which sidesteps on the Nintendo Switch next year. Okay. For our last segment, we'd like to show you really? several more indie games coming to Nintendo Switch. Enjoy! Of bat of the towel of Babel. Uh, uh, That's all for today's indie world. Really? We hope you enjoyed the slew of games in today's showcase. Yeah, slew, slew. You mean the famine? That was incredibly underwhelming. Like they didn't even have one exclusive. What was the fucking point of that? Everything was just was like extremely underwhelming. Mo Oh, that can't be right. Yeah, most of this is isn't even the thing. It's mostly just that. It only so there's only like so it started at minus twenty six. Yeah, about twenty five minutes. So there's only like twenty five minutes worth of. What was the fucking point? 
There's literally nothing that stands out here. I know Totally Accurate Battle Simulator is supposed to be a good game, but that's been out for fucking ages. There is nothing in here that I can say, yes, that was worth my time coming to watch this. This was just a fucking waste of time. That's not to say that, you know, any of these games look bad, but none of them really just like, yes, this is a game that I'm going to get out of my way to It's like, eh, all this looks like, a, you know, a game, but it's just like, Nothing, nothing really, there's nothing really stand out here, at least in my opinion, like, you might have seen something that interests you particularly, but it's just like, the most noteworthy thing here for me was the fact that Totally Accurate Battle Simulators has multiplayer that I didn't know, I guess this little electric thing was kinda, electric head thing was kinda creative. But it's just made me not want to play it really. Cause it just looked boring. God, yeah. Uh. Yeah, just thoroughly underwhelming. Well, I hope you guys all did enjoy this video. I'll see you guys in the next video, and bye bye.